In this episode, we're going to be talking about how to fire up the idea machine. I was going to call it, you have to get bored, but I didn't think anyone would want to listen to that. This is I Should Be Writing, Season 17, Episode 51. But I should be writing. And hi there. This is I Should Be Writing, the podcast for wannabe fiction writers. I'm your host, Mer Lafferty. I'm uh, author and podcaster and streamer and editor. I wear a lot of hats and I do a lot of stuff. And I have a very Googleable name. So if you're new, you Google Mer Lafferty, you'll find my stuff. I'm very lucky that way. So I have actually had uh, an excellent day writing. I'm a little worried because I have, um, I'm trying to do the save, I'm trying to look at the Save the Cat beats and I'm trying to write a novella, a short novella of 20,000 words. And I'm like, I finished a part and I thought, hey, that's the end of act one. That's the break. And I looked at my word count and it said 10,000. <laughs> And 10,000 is the midpoint, not the break for act one. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Um, I know I won't get paid for more words than 20,000, but I'm not sure if that means they'll accept it if I write long, just I won't get paid for the extra words. Or if I'm going to have to cut it. But I felt really good writing, and that's really what's important right now. I am struggling a bit because I it's like it's like you paint yourself into your own corner because I'm trying to write about people running a children's television show and my editor wants bits from the show I have written four songs four I am not a poet I am not I'm not a wordsmith you know it's like I know people who can write paragraphs that make you cry and their their use of words are just brilliant that's not me you know I, I like to write a good story but when the word usage is just so beautiful that's like it's Neil Gaiman China Mieville Fran Wilde stuff that's not me and so taking that into songwriting also poetry it's like crap it's absolute crap and so I'm I'm about to the point where I'm just just gonna say a song goes here and then I'll keep working on the plot because it just I feel like I hit a brick wall every time I have to do a song so that's fun but um really I have been doing okay with the words as for good news I mentioned it before, but I'm going to mention it again because it's, it's such a weird feeling. Um, my book got accepted as final draft. And so we're sending copies to the copywriter or the, the copy editor. And we're sending, starting to ask for blurbs. And I realized that because of COVID and losing my editor and just stress, and because the book was not where it needed to be. I have worked on this book for a couple of years now and been kicking the edits back and forth and back and forth. And when she told me it was final, I was happy. I was very happy because this also means I get my next advance check. Yeah, you got to think about that when it comes to delivering a book is that if you're late, not only can you make your editor angry if you don't tell them, but you're also delaying your own payment. So I don't get paid until I turn in that final draft or until they accept the draft as final, actually. So, um, that's good. But I, when she said, uh, here, here are PDFs to send to people for blurbs. I'm thinking 
it's not ready yet. I need I need another polishing run. I, I need to go through again and fix little things because that's what I do with this book. Like I absolutely train myself to just, she sends it to me and I edit it and I send it back to her. <laughs> and then she sends it to me and I edit it. And yeah, so, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm very, I'm trying to get my brain around that and around the whole blurb thing. This probably goes better on ditch diggers, but I'll bring it up right now since I'm thinking about it. The, the thing about blurbs is really weird. On one hand, um, it is easier for authors to ask each other for favors. On the other hand, if the answer's no, it creates awkwardness. I mean, some of my friends I love dearly, but I'm not entirely in love with their writing. Um, sometimes I don't have time which everybody understands, but it still, it still feels unkind. Which is why we as authors prefer it when you go through the channels of the editor or the agent. But my editor wanted me to do the, um, wanted me to do the personal thing. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to approach friends and not make it awkward if they want to say no, which is perfectly fine. Because I understand. I have trouble reading for blurbs. But uh, that's my good news. It's it's moving forward. It's on schedule for October 2022. I'm very excited. I'm happy with the title. The title is uh, Station Eternity. That I'm still getting used to saying that. And yeah. You know I'll be giving away copies on the stream. I'll, I'll, I'll have figured this thing out by then. For sure. Definitely. Um, so does anybody uh, in chat have any good news? And if you have good news listening later, then please email me and I'll say it on the next show. So if anybody has any good news, drop it in the chat. All right, well, it doesn't look like we have any good news in the chat. I hope you're all doing okay, though. That's sometimes all you can hope for. But, um... Oh, yes, yes. Uh, Will's a slush reader for Escape Pod. Yes, welcome to the team, Will, and uh, congratulations. I can say congratulations because, um... I don't... Oh, wow, wait. Where's my confetti? I turned my confetti off. Dang it. All right, I turned my confetti off and I don't know why. Now I'm mad. I really was gonna make this easier on my, um... There we go, okay. But congratulations, Will, and I can say this congratulations because I'm actually not in charge of the uh, slush team. That's our awesome associate editor or assistant editor, Ben. So, um, you know, I made the recommendation to Ben, but it was his call whether he had a place for a new slush reader. So, um, I'm very excited to have you on the team, Will. Especially since apparently you read really, really fast. But onward. So, I wanted to um, talk about the idea machine because a lot of times authors get told where do your ideas come from or how do you get all these great ideas and I can't remember who I want to say Tobias Bakel but that it could be just because he was on the show on Tuesday but I know there's somebody whose answer was how do you turn yours off because we as authors are idea machines. I mean, the best place to get a good idea is about one third the way into your book and you get bored with it and you get a new idea because your brain just wants to come up with something new and shiny. But I realize that I am not as um, idea rich as I was before. And I think it's because I'm not letting myself get bored. 
So I'm doing the thing of it's it's the the devices. I get there's a moment I could be bored, I grab my phone or my tablet or my switch and I entertain myself and my brain's just not doing what it's supposed to be doing, which is just sitting around going I'm bored. Let me think of something cool just to entertain myself. Which is how your brain comes up with stuff. Which is why I was going to name this episode How to Get Bored, but, you know, I figured that would turn some people off. So, um... Yeah, how, how to deal with that is very hard. I know, because I can't, you know, stay addicted to my devices and shake my finger at you. There is the, there's the kitchen lockbox that I told you guys about. Uh, last year, I got into a very bad habit of, <laughs> if you've played Animal Crossing, you know that uh, the turnip market, it opens at not eight every morning, I think, and then you get the turnip prices, and then the turnip prices change at noon. So ideally, if you're really looking to make money buying turnips and selling turnips, saying this out loud just feels ridiculous. Even though I know a lot of people know what I'm talking about because it's a big game. But to do that, you have to check the prices in the morning and in the afternoon. And I would take care of the dogs, take care of the family, uh, drive numbers ninja to school come home and then I would pick up my switch just to check the turnip prices and you can guess how that went um, I would waste so much time on Animal Crossing I would wonder where my day went and so I that I bought the lock box and every night I would put my switch into the box and set a timer that it wouldn't unlock until like three o'clock and I did not get morning turnip prices, but uh, I got more productive, that's for sure. I don't advocate doing that to your phone, and maybe I'm just saying that as a parent who, who worries and a adult with aging parents that, you know, you, it's clear plastic, you're seeing the phone ring and seeing someone important is on the other end, and your only option is to start trying to break this very hard plastic shell. So the phone is still a problem. But actually, there is a thing you can do to your phone, at least uh, iPhone. I don't know about the others, but there's a thing you can do to your phone to make it less of a dopamine hit on your brain. And that's make it black and white. And it really is annoying to, it's like you look at your phone and suddenly you feel a little bit like a petulant child that you're not getting the prize you wanted to get because it's, you, you want the prize and you open your phone and your brain's not releasing those chemicals because you're not looking at all the bright colors. To do that on an iPhone, um, you see it's color now. And I think you push the side button three times. Yep. And now it's black and white. So, uh, yeah, I figured Android would support black and white. I just don't know how to tell you to do it. So you'll, you guys will have to figure that out. Um, but that is one way to make it less of a dopamine hit on your brain, which means you won't, you will be less likely to spend a lot of time on it. But I think, I'm thinking focusing on the um, reason you're doing this. You know, when people are trying to change their lifestyles or change their habits, the way you go about looking at it is important. So not say, I have to work out today. You say, I get to work out today. And, you know, I like running when I get out there. I like the, the, the apps, the Zombies Run app I listen to. That's a story, and I want to keep the story going. And so I've got incentives. So I get to run is nice. And now that I'm going to be 48 this, uh, you know, I'm closing up on 50, it's like, 
yeah, the ability to go and run three miles is starting to become a bigger and bigger treat. So um, saying that you're not punishing yourself by breaking an addiction to your devices, instead saying that you are um, giving your brain time to hang out and do stuff and figure stuff out. And you might figure out a plot problem. You might uh, get a completely new idea. You might resurrect an old idea, but know how it works now. There's a lot of stuff you can do to make these, uh, make your brain get back to work on being the idea machine that it's supposed to be. Instead of let's have Reddit or Twitter or baseball, admittedly, all those things that give your brain the dopamine that you used to get from working very hard to figure out a plot point. I guess that releases dopamine. It feels really good when you figure out a plot point. Um, I I was complaining I, uh, in the chat that I wanted to talk about that moment, but honestly, every time I get it, I say a specific swear word, and I write the specific swear word in the margins because it's often one of those things of, how could I not see that? It's right there. And um, the, the, the wonderful people on Discord just recommended saying the Eureka moment or something. But, you know, if, if I ever die and someone decide, well, I will die someday, but if I ever die without tidying up all this stuff and someone has the bad luck to be the one to go through my notes, you'll find a note here and there with a very all caps swear words on it and the notes underneath it, and that is me figuring out what was going wrong. And the really weird thing about it, and I think it's brain self-sabotage, is that once I figure it out, it feels so obvious that, that why didn't I think of that from the beginning? And I think part of it is subconsciously I was building up to that. There's a, I know the book's like five years old, but I still don't want to spoil it. There's a device in Six Wakes that when I introduced it into the story, I wanted it to be large and absurd. So I made it large enough to hold a whole pig, like a hog, huge thing. And then later on in the story, I realized you could fit a human in there. And once that piece locked into place, I thought, well, of course. And, but I didn't make that device with the intent to put a human in there. I just thought really big device, big enough to hold a whole pig. That was, uh, and so that's, that's one of my, my moments of, well, it seems obvious, but at the time it was just like mind blowing Eureka thing. But yeah, I give myself fewer and fewer Eureka moments because I am always fiddling with devices. I'll be honest. So uh, I'm going to be trying to use my lockbox. And I know one family member's tuned in. Both of them might be. So uh, if they want to help keep me honest, that's great. But allowing myself to get bored, allowing myself to... Uh, do driving or housework, maybe listening to a book. I mean, reading's not bad. Reading's good for you, but sometimes I default to podcasts or television shows or um, audiobooks when maybe silence might help my brain come up with something new or fix something. I just feel bad bringing this up as something you should do because I know it's going to be a struggle. I know that. But it's, uh, it's necessary. We used to get bored and, and come up with ways to entertain ourselves. And now we don't have to do that anymore. And brains are getting lazy. So that is my idea machine theory today. Put your phone on uh, mute and 
black and white. Perhaps lock away the gaming machines if you find yourself playing with them at improper times. Try silence every once in a while. That's going to be the hardest one for me. Especially when running. I, I want to listen to a book or music while running, but I think sometimes maybe silence would help. I don't know. I might do it and hate it and not come up with any ideas. If I, if I hate it and come up with ideas, then I just have to tell myself to stop being an angry six-year-old. Thank you for listening to I Should Be Writing. If you would like to hear the extended version of this episode, you can support at Patreon for as little as a dollar at patreon.com slash or you could just come hang out with us on Twitch, where we will keep going with this conversation. You can learn more about me and my books and my podcasts at merverse.com. You can email me your questions about writing at mightymer at gmail.com. My socials are Twitter, Mighty Mer, uh, Instagram when I remember to put something up, and that's Mighty Mer numeral two. And you can catch this show and my other streams live on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Mighty Mer. Thank you to John Anilio for the use of his song, I Should Be Writing. And thank you to Summer Brooks for the awesome production she gives. So that's it for me. I'll see you next time. And until then, you should be writing. Do I do this to myself? This podcast is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you would also like to join the Ink Stained Fabulists, go to patreon.com slash mighty mer. On the spine of a